morning, a warm welcome to you all. Thank you for joining our Level Up Wednesday webinar. My name is Dawn Lane and I'm the Program Manager for the Massey Learning Institute. Today we bring you a very interesting and important topic entitled Through the Looking Glass, a talk about digital eye strain, its management, prevention and eye care. So even before the onset of COVID-19, most of us possessed at least one type of electronic device. You know, we had our tablets and so forth. Since the onset of the virus, however, we seem to have taken a quantum leap from our regular lives into the virtual world, where most things like school and work in particular are accessed virtually. So when you add digital eye strain or computer vision syndrome, we get a cocktail of a variety of eye problems. So our presenter today is Dr. Deborah Bartholomew, and she has a special interest in ophthalmology. That is her area. She graduated in 1995 with a bachelor's in medicine and a bachelor's in surgery from the University of the West Indies and has worked in Trinidad and Tobago and abroad in the UK in the field of ophthalmology for over 20 years. She's an avid advocate for diabetes awareness and patient education, speaking on its effect on the eyes in local media and in conjunction with the Diabetes Association of Trinidad and Tobago. She has worked closely with the Lions Association over the years in the realm of vision screening, health education, and cataract surgery projects. In addition, Dr. Bartholomew was selected as one of only two medical doctors working in the field during the National Eye Survey in Trinidad and Tobago the first of its kind in the country. So I say a good morning and warm welcome to the Dr. Bartholomew. Doctor. Thank, you very much. Thank you very much, Dawn. Good morning, everyone. So let's get right to it. My talk is entitled Through the Looking Glass, Down the Rabbit Hole of the Virtual World. Within the last year, we found ourselves hurtling into a new reality of a virtual platform for teaching, learning, communication and work. Why is this a problem? Have we really tumbled down a rabbit hole? Well, for starters, this is what our world was like a year ago. You remember when teachers taught on blackboards and we could shake hands freely and just run in and play in fields and work uh, away from home? As we know, the onset of COVID-19 has forced us to rethink everything. Work from home, virtual learning became part of our vocabulary. Tumbling into the rabbit hole of the virtual world, we became isolated in our homes, our eyes fixated on our new looking glass, our screens. So this is what this is what we we are at now. Virtual meetings like this one. So digital eye strain or computer vision syndrome, I'm sure quite a few of us, if not all of us, have uh, experienced one or two of the symptoms within the last year. So digital eye strain or computer, computer vision syndrome is a group of symptoms resulting from the use of electronic devices, which includes but is not limited to eye complaints. Isn't that interesting? The factors that contribute to digital eye strain fall into two main categories. The individual's visual ab ability, so that is if you if you are short-sighted or far-sighted or presbyopic, meaning you need glasses for reading, but you, you do not have glasses you, or contact lenses, any kind of, of correction at all. If you have binocular vision disorders, meaning that one of your eyes may turn in, you may have what, what we call a squint if you have accommodative disorders, so some people uh, have um, issues with looking at near 
not not just press by press by people, but they have issues with looking at nail um, and this this they may have had this from since childhood. And ocular surface or tear film abnormalities, meaning that the front surface of your eye is irregular. So people who work out uh, uh, in the sunlight, for instance, who may have that that fleshy growth on the eye, call it pterygium, and people who have dry eyes. And then there are the environmental factors, that is the lighting conditions in the workplace, the display position, the display characteristics and image quality, and we will get into this um, a, a little bit. These factors result in symptoms of eye strain, blurred vision, dryness and musculoskeletal symptoms such as neck, shoulder and back pain. Why don't we experience this when we read print then? Because in print, the characters are dense black characters, the borders are well defined, and there's a high contrast between letters and the light background. But with an electronic device, there's a lower level of contrast. The edges are not sharply defined, and there, there may be a presence of reflections on screen and a presence of glare. For instance, when was the last time you wiped the, the, uh, the um, screen of your, your, your device? your tablet or your keyboard, when was the last time you wiped that? Do you know that that can contribute to eye strain? So all of these, all of these issues can contribute to fatigue. So who gets eye strain? Persons at risk usually spend a few hours a day at a computer or on a digital device. They can be too close to their computer or digital device screen. Oh gosh, and we see, we see this, we see this often. They, view their computer or digital device at the wrong angle. Or they've had bad posture while using the computer or digital device. We see people with their with a couple of pillows up underneath her neck or they're lying on their side. They may have eye problems and even minor ones which which are not corrected with glasses or contact lenses. Or they may have a pair of glasses that is not suitable for viewing the distance of their computer. For instance, there are people who use who who are press biopic, uh, who have um, bifocals or progressive lenses, and they use the bottom part of the of the lens to look at the computer screen, which is inaccurate. We will get into why. They don't take breaks while they're working, and they may have an underlying problem with dry eye. So the causative factors, main causative factors, as we said, uncorrected or undercorrected refractive error, decreased blink rate, and we'll explain why, poor lighting, poor posture. What are the symptoms of eye strain? Remember we said that it's not just eye symptoms. Sore, tired, burning or itchy eyes, watery or dry eyes, and 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 when I say dry eyes, they may not feel dry. They may actually feel heavy or, or you may feel sleepy or the eyes may feel tight. Blurred or double vision. Usually, so when you have, sometimes the blurred vision is, is relieved when you blink, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes the blurred vision gets worse as time goes on. The more you use your computer or your device, the, the the more blurred your vision gets. You find that you may have to either zoom, go in, increase the size of the of the font, or zoom out. Or when you try to look into the distance at the end of a long day, after eight hours or so, and you try to look into the distance, you find that your distance vision is now blurred. Headaches usually at the uh, across the front of your of your forehead, but often. Uh, in your temples and eye pain, sore neck, shoulders or back, increased sensitivity to light, difficulty concentrating and feeling that you cannot keep your eyes open. As dry as a desert, how does electronics use cause dry eyes? So this is this is what happens when you blink. I want you to pay particular attention to a couple of things. This green structure here, those are the glands that produce, you see it in the top and the bottom, those are the glands that produce oil. That oil is important to prevent your tears from drying out too fast. It is extremely important. Th that oil, as you can see, only spreads across the surface of the tears 
when you blink. Only when you blink. So if you blink less, that oil doesn't become spread enough. The next thing is that the tears are produced by the lacrimal gland, but see, they just run over the surface. They are only spread over the entire surface of the eye when you blink. So blinking is extremely important. So what's the, what's the significance? Decreased blinking results in decreased tear breakup time. It means that it takes, no, normally your tears take 10 seconds to break up. That is 10 seconds for dry spots to appear. If you blink less, then it's going to take less time for your tears to break up. In fact, some people's tears, as they blink, the tears dry out because the oil is not being spread over the front surface. Several studies have shown, in addition, that a decrease in blink rate during computer work happens, and this decreases further when you are doing complex or complicated reading or assignments. So when you are concentrating, you tend to blink less and we tend to concentrate when we are using the electronic device. But there's also another thing. There's an increase in incomplete blinks, and this is really important. When I say incomplete blinks, let's go back. You see that the top lid touches the bottom lid. If the top lid doesn't touch the bottom lid, only one part of the eye becomes covered in tears, but only the watery part of the tear film, not the oily part, because the, the two lids need to touch for the oily, oily film to spread over the surface. So more concentration equals less blink. So we said these are the common dry eye symptoms, stinging or burning, excessive tearing or watering of the eyes, redness, episodes of blurred vision, and the sandy or gritty sensation. Let's talk about posture. The distance between the eye and the screen, that is a computer screen, should be an arm's length, 20 to 25 inches or 50 to 63 centimeters approximately. Okay, if it's a tablet or a phone, it sh actually should be a third of an arm's length away. So not, not, not very far away as some people who refuse to get glasses when they're over the age of 40 do. The place of the screen should be as far away as possible. This is for a computer and optimally, it is recommended to increase the font size. So if you're struggling, increase the font size because what will happen is that you tend to squint as as it gets more blurred and squinting means that you are using muscles excessively which will become tired so think of you of, of lifting a weight for the, for eight hours will we do that no because we know that our arm will become fatigued but we do it with our eyes uh, the gaze position of the eye to the screen should be slightly downward so if it's too far down, then you see what happens here. Your neck becomes bent, your back is curved, and you see here there's no armrest. So your so your shoulders will become you will, you can get shoulder pain and neck pain because the the arm is not the arm is suspended. So the right way is to have your arm on an armrest so that your arm is, is just over 90 degrees and that your, your, your computer screen is just under um, your, your, your gaze. And you can do it standing as well. See the same position standing. Ensure that your feet are flat or almost flat on the floor. If your feet are dangling, that's going to put pressure on your spine. Let's talk about how sitting affects your your back did you know that sitting increases the pressure on your spine see what happens here with with the angle and with sitting so here standing the disc pressure is at a hundred percent sitting at 90 degrees is at a hundred and forty percent slightly backwards 115 105 even further backwards and sitting forward so curved it's at 190 percent 
So the ideal would be sitting uh, so that the so that the, the back is is uh, either at 90 degrees or slightly backwards, slightly backward. Adequate lighting. The brightness of the monitor must not be brighter than the surrounding light. So people tend to be in dark rooms that increases eye strain. So you, what you do is you you make sure that the light, your room light is a, a, a almost of equal intensity to the to the light on your screen and you increase the contrast on your screen. Now remember that the causative factors of dry eyes are decreased blink rate, medications such as antihistamines or cold medicines, they dry your eyes out. Allergic eye disease also dr causes dry eyes because your tears tend to be more mucousy and don't spread over the surface of your eyes. Frequent use of other eye drops, lubricants, blinking often and considering a humidifier are um, management or treatments to avoid dry eyes. So let's talk about the 2020-20 eye rule. So to avoid eye strain, every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break and you look 20 feet away. So every 20 minutes, you can set an alarm, okay? If you have severe dry eyes, you can put a drop in your eyes just before you start to blink. So every 20 minutes, it's a 20, 20, but I also add in an extra 20. So every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break, you look 20 feet away and you blink 20 times. Now, if you don't know what 20 feet is, what, what 20 feet away is, we, we in the Caribbean, and I don't know, I don't know, um, how many people know know this term, but I but we say this all the time. We in the Caribbean know how to macro good. We look look into your neighbor's yard, look across the street. Twenty feet away is is across the street, as far away as you can. Look away, because you are breaking the cycle of accommodation. Because what's ha what's happening is that when you are when you are looking at something at near you are actually using muscles to change the shape of your lens when you do that for 8 hours the lens is becomes stuck in that position but those muscles are working over time they're not meant to work that way they're meant to look at things from at different distances which is what we were doing before the virtual world so take your 20, sec 20 minute break, look away 20 feet into the distance, blink 20 times and do that for 20 seconds. Now, uh, if you can't take a break every 20 minutes, then every two hours you take a 10 second, uh, sorry, you take a 10 minute break or every hour you take a five minute break. Okay. But the important thing is to break that cycle of accommodation and blink. Those are the two most important things. So how do we avoid eye strain while working at the computer? Do not forget to get your eye checks every year to every two years. So if you are someone who's over 40, stop saying, you know, I'm over 40 and I don't use glasses. I'm over 50 and I don't use glasses. Nobody's giving you a prize for that. OK, the only prize that you'll get is a good dose of headache, eye strain, uh, 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 and, and, and brow ache and eye ache. So get your eyes checked regularly. There are lots of reasons why, especially over the 40, you need to get your eyes, eyes checked. There are things like glaucoma uh, and cataracts that, start, that may start developing. Okay. So get your eyes checked regularly. And if you need glasses, get your glasses. Alternatively, if you've not had any issues, you can actually pick up a pair of, of over-the-counter readers, walk with a, a, a book or get a card, and you put on the glass, to try them on. But you don't have to put them onto your face because these days with COVID. So you can hold them just in front of your, your eyes uh, and, and, and hold your, 
hold whatever it is to read and see how comfortable it is. But bearing in mind that getting a pair of glasses for reading and getting a pair of glasses for the computer would be two different things. So whatever you get for reading for the computer would be uh, a little bit less. So if you're if you're a plus two, then for the computer would be a, pl a plus one point five. Do regular eye exercises. So roll the eyes around, look up, look down, look into the distance, that kind of thing. Make sure that the lighting is proper in your room. Clean your monitor. Remember I said about glare and the dust on the screen can affect glare, can cause glare and can also affect what you see. Make sure that your screen is an arm's length away. Now you can get uh, um, screen the the the, uh, the um, screen protectors that reduce glare. Scale your font, increase the size of your fonts, and remember to blink frequently. Do not forget the 20, 20, 20 rule. Wear your glasses if you have to. In fact, as the day goes on, if you find that you may need may not need your glasses early in the morning, you may need them as time goes on during the day, depending on how long your day is. Every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break, look 20 feet away and blink completely 20 times. So to recap, don't forget your lubricants, proper posture, adequate lighting, as we said, the 20-20-20 rule and correct any refractive error. Be wise, protect your eyes. Fantastic. So, doctor, you know, for sure, I'm going to remember the 20, 20, 20 rule. I particularly like where you said lacrosse in the neighbor yard. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, will, I will pick that down for sure. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand you over to Susanna Reyes, who will take you through uh, some questions. And um, as we move forward, there may be one or two slides that we may refer to just for your um, explanation again. Susanna. Thank you, Dawn. And thanks everyone for listening and the viewing audience at large. A pleasant good morning. So the questions we have posted thus far is, do I need computer eyewear to help with screen time? When you say computer eyewear, it, and now it depends, okay? That's why I said, uh, if you have a refractive error, especially those, of us who may be uh, far sighted, so that if you are if you are near sighted, you're not under that much strain because most of your things are here in front of you. But if you are far sighted, those who are far sighted, they tend to use the muscles extra to be able to accommodate. It means that their near vision is is blurred. So to to look at a device, they actually overuse the muscles of accommodation and they're the ones who tend to be more at risk of getting eye strain. So I recommend I recommend that you get your eyes tested. If you have glasses for using the computer, then by all means use them. Now there, there, there's, there's a, a toss-up because it, people are talking about blue light and blue light blocking glasses and we're not quite sure the effect of blue light yet with regard to um, eye strain. What we do know, what we do know is that uh, blue light affects your melatonin production and affects your sleep. So we know that for a fact. OK, so don't quite get into the gimmicks yet. If you have something to protect your your um, computer screen already, use that. OK. OK, thank you. And the second question, if I don't wear glasses, will computer vision syndrome damage my eyes to the point where I will require prescription lens? Um, no, but I can I can guarantee you that you don't want a good dose of computer vision syndrome or digital or eye strain. I can guarantee you because it can make you sick. It can make you physically sick. You can you can have nausea. You can you can throw up. So no one wants to get eye strain. Um, that said, after the age of forty, we are all going to need glasses. 
there are people who say, I don't need glasses, I'm in my 50s. And, 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 and then the supermarket and, and, and the phone a yard away. After the age of 40, we all need glasses. OK, um, some sooner than some, but there's, as I said, there's no prize given away for for people who don't need glasses or or or, or um, sorry, no prize given away for people who are not um, using glasses, no prize. So get your eyes tested. OK, and on that, uh, following from that note, we have another question. What do you recommend parents do to help their children now in online classes and then after classes? Right, so I, I and I do this with my sons. Um, as, as I boast about their school a lot, um, but what their school has done is that they have a long break and they have a long lunch. And as soon as school is finished, they get they take a break. OK, that's really important. So the they, regular breaks are important. So like I said, if you can't take a 20 a break at 20 minutes every two hours, you take a, 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 a 10 minute break. It's a, that break is really important. OK, it's it's important to get your kids outside. Out of the house, so it mean that mean may mean uh, just stepping outside into the yard. OK, but we know for a fact that there is a growing pandemic of myopia, meaning that there's a growing pandemic of short sightedness, and that is because of the amount of time that children are spending on computers, on devices. That's not been brought on by the pandemic, by the way. That's not been brought on by the pandemic. That's That's been brought on by the world, by society. OK, kids are spending more. We ourselves are spending more and more time uh, tied to digital devices. In fact, um, it, we find it hard to put it down in the night, right? We, 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 we literally fall asleep. We don't go to sleep, OK? We don't make a consistent effort and, and put it aside and then uh, do nothing and just let ourselves re relax and go to bed. So, so for kids especially, I recommend that they spend, they at least have one or two hours away from any digital device. Just whether it is that they're outside, they're eating, they're, they're playing, they're doing whatever, but, but have some time away from a device. The other thing is this, we know for a fact that um, there is something happening called pseudo presbyopia. Pseudo means false, okay? Presbyopia is something that happens in um, as we get older, where the muscles that change the shape of the lens are less able to do so with time. So, so in fact, we may even start off at the age of 40 or maybe even in, in, in your late 30s, you may notice that you're, you're not able to um, to read things for as long or they may start getting blurred if you hold it where you used to. And then as time goes on, you find that you have to hold it further and further away or you find that you go from from being able to read without glasses for an hour to being able to read without glasses for five minutes or maybe not even. But this is actually happening in a group of 20 and 30 year olds, and it's because of the amount of time that they are spending on the computer. So it's not the eye strain per se that is causing it. It's the, it's the usage of, of these devices. If you were to use it less or break up time in between, you won't have the issue. So the, the computer vision syndrome does not ca cause any permanent damage, um, but but certainly we need to use uh, 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 use the 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 um, our devices with intervals in between, and that's the important take home message. Thank you. We have another. Is it better to dim the brightness of devices at night? Yes, so um, they, a lot of them come with um, a night mode now, where it's they not only dim the uh, dim the the brightness of the screen, but they also the the blue light is changed. So if you notice, you notice the the actual lighting 
becomes different. It becomes a more yellowish light. And that's because blue light actually aff affects melatonin production and melatonin is important for sleep. So yes, definitely. Thank you. As an ophthalmologist, are you seeing increased eye damage due to increased virtual working during the pandemic? Well, I won't say eye damage, you know, um, but definitely there are a lot more people are coming in with with issues because of um, um, digital eye strain. And, and, you know, it's funny because digital eye strain is not a new entity, uh, not by any means. Um, I remember when now I might I might be sh showing my age a little bit, but I remember when the um, uh, um, color TV first came into being and it was the worst dose of ice cream I'd ever gotten. I, 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 I probably vomited for uh, well almost a day. Um, so it's not a, it's not a, it's not a new thing, but but yes, we are seeing it more now because of of the way we are uh, and also because people just have this i don't know what the issue is with us not um seeking wellness in the caribbean we tend to uh, pride ourselves on being healthy when we don't know what is going on with us so a lot of us are affected by um a, a lot of people who are affected by covid they have no idea what the underlying medical illness is uh, uh, or whether they have any comorbidities because they haven't seen a doctor in years and they pride themselves and say, oh, I haven't seen a doctor in, in, in 14, 15 years. So it's important for us to make sure, to ensure that we get our eye checks regularly. Getting our eye checks means that we are less prone to getting uh, computer vision syndrome because we have our corrective lenses. We, if you don't know, whether you are short sighted or long sighted, then you are going to, uh, um, uh, and if you are, then you are going to you most likely develop um, computer vision syndrome. You are actually going to be, there are people who hold, hold their, I'm sure you've seen it, people holding their phones right up to their faces, right up to their noses, because they can't see, you know? So um, yes, there is an increase. There is also an increase because of the amount of Sahara dust that has been in our region. Um, uh, that has that has. I, I I can't even say if it's tripled because there are some days you go out and you wonder what on earth is in the in, in the air. Um, that in itself, and I want everyone to be mindful of that because that is actually going to increase your symptoms of dry eyes, um, uh, and therefore cause you to de to develop eye strain as well. Okay, thank you for that. So I have another. It's a two part question. Mm -hmm. Is digital eye strain permanent? And the second part is, what do you think of corrective eye surgery? Right. So digital eye strain is not permanent. No, we 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 covered that when we said no, it's not. Um, but if you want to not have the issue, you have to put the corrective measures in place. Otherwise, you will continue to get eye strain. That's so that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, corrective surgery. Um. For, for vision um, is not a, 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 a broad sweeping brush. So not everyone can have it, okay? Some people have it and they're fine. Some people can't. Um, it's expensive. Uh, um, and um, there are other things. So, so for instance, if you are, if you are in your um, late 50s to 60s um, doing laser surgery, and maybe even if in, in your late forties, doing laser surgery may, may not be the, the, the best thing. Maybe better to, to remove your lens and have a, a um, exchange your lens. So what we call a clear lens exchange if you don't have a cataract. So it's 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 not a broad sweeping brush. It's, it, 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 you have to take a lot of things into consideration, including the patient. And if you are someone who is prone to having dry eyes, uh, Corrective laser surgery is not the um, thing for you because it makes your, uh, your it makes dry eyes worse, way worse. Okay, thank you. And I'm leading again into another question. Similarly, for dry eyes and redness, is it safe to use over the counter medication? Yeah, well, the the, the over the counter but it depends on what you use. Now, um, using stuff to take out redness. 
is not ideal because those things actually they they not only contribute to dry eyes but they also um can make your redness worse because what you tend to do is you tend to use it um and then your eyes you use it for a period of of maybe say five days and your eyes look fine and then the next day you wake up and your eyes are uh um are red again and so you put it in and what happens is your eyes get redder because you're only supposed to use those drops for a period of time. What they do is they cause the blood vessels to constrict. So the, 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 um, the eye is less red, but over time, the blood vessels actually dilate and they dilate to, uh, to um, a, a larger size pre using the drops. So they actually make it worse. And what you're doing, what you end up doing is you, you see the redness and you just keep feeding it and it just keeps getting drier and dry, um, redder and redder and redder. So the, the, the ideal thing is to find out what's causing the redness, uh, whether it is allergies, which can be treated, or whether it is dry eyes, which can also be treated. But you can start off with um, using simple lubricating eye drops, uh, um, Sistine, Sistine, Refresh, any one of those, there, 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 there are a number of different ones. And, and the thing is that there are different viscosities. So, um, if you use if you're using something that is not as viscous and you find that you have to use it every hour, then go up, go up in in viscosity. Find out which one is more viscous and use that. And and what you can do is you can use the more viscous one frequently, so a couple of times a day or two or three times a day, or when you take a break, for instance, because the more viscous you go up, the more blurred your vision becomes when you when you put it put them in. It take a while for your vision to to um to come back to normal. So put them in at the beginning of your break, close your eyes, blink a few times if you if you need to. Um, and that way, the, 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 the less viscous medication, you don't have to use it as, as often. And you can you can you can mix and see which is best for you. Hey, thank you. Can eye strain cause vertigo along with nausea for several days? If so, what can be done to stop the vertigo? Right. So this sounds very much like uh, like allergies. OK, um, I strain vertigo causes nausea, horrible nausea. Um, so it sounds very much like like um, allergies, which can, as we said, can go hand in hand with um, with digital eye strain because the allergies cause symptoms as well. Remember, the Sahara this is an issue. Um, so what what you do there is something called an EPLES, and I want you to, to take this down. Um, I will write it in the chat. Um, it's called an EPLES. Okay. Search that up online. Um, you will actually see it uh, on YouTube how to do it. And what you do is you you are sitting sitting on on a bed. Um, you tilt your, you turn your head, so you, you're sitting upright, turn your head to the right uh, first, and then you, you lean, you go all the way back, you lie back quickly, and you stay that way for 30 seconds or until the dizziness stops, whichever one lasts longer. And then you turn your head after that, you turn your head 40, uh, 45 degrees, so, so you go from your head, your head being at 45 degrees like this, to your head being like that, 45 degrees, still lying, and you wait 30 seconds or until uh, the dizziness stops. And then with your head at 45 degrees, you turn your entire body at 45 degrees. So your, your body, so, uh, you, you go from lying flat, Sorry, at 90 degrees. So you go from lying flat to lying on your side and your head is still at, at 45 degrees. And, and, and you stay that way until for 30 seconds or until the dizziness stops. And then you sit upright. And you can also repeat it on the other side if when you turn your head to the other side, um, you feel dizziness. Epley's maneuver is usually done uh, at three times a day, but it works. The reason for the dizziness is that it is your air that is affected. 
by by your allergies. Okay, so what the, the maneuver does is actually writes the circulation of the fluid in your in your in your semicircular canals. Another thing that helps and also helps with the eyes um, is steaming. So you can a bowl of of uh, hot water. Put a couple of menthol crystals or Vicks or peppermint oil, eucalyptus oil, chillin oil. Cover your head with a towel and sit there for 15 minutes. And you find that it also helps to, un to unclog the sinuses because it is the sinuses being uh, uh, blocked uh, and not able to drain that also uh, has an effect on on uh, on your on the vertigo. But this is all brought on by by the Sahara dust on the ash that's taken taken place or was taken place recently. Thank you so much, and and we certainly appreciate those practical techniques that we can do at home. And I have a, a related question about vertigo. Um, okay. I have been wearing progressive lens for a couple months after wearing single lens for years. I use multiple screens and find it difficult to find the area of focus when looking from screen to screen. Can this cause vertigo and nausea? Yeah, just just so so looking from screen to screen is probably causing causing your problem because because the kind of vertigo that you get when your your ears um, are affected, um, you can't turn your head from from left to right. So if you do if you do the Epley's maneuver and you find that without and you're doing the Epley's maneuver without your glasses, if you find that you do the Epley's maneuver without your glasses and you're actually feeling dizzy, it's not the glasses causing it. Okay, it's actually brought on by by the same issue that I said before. However, progressives take a lot of getting used to, and if that is what you are doing, if that's what you have to do, then I recommend that you don't use use uh, progressives for the computer. Get a straight single vision. Um, so, so whether it is, and, and you can get them over the counter. So find out from your doctor, find out from your, sorry, from your optometrist, what your, your, um, prescription was at the bottom, which is your reading prescription. And you can subtract, uh, plus five from that. So if you have a plus 2.25 or a plus 1.5, then get a plus one. And you can use that for your computer because actually when you are using the computer, you're not using the bottom part of your progressive lenses. And 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 progressive lenses weren't really made for us to use a computer. When they came about, it was because people hated the line across the um across the the lenses. People who who um didn't want to use bifocals. There were trifocals, and the tri trifocals you had a slim bit in the middle. But the problem with with progressives is that um they 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 think of a uh um think of a dumbbell that is that is uh um standing on on end that is actually what your 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 lenses are like the the top part of the dumbbell is your distance vision and you have a tiny corridor which is the which is the part that you hold there's a tiny corridor leading down to the reading part so it's hard to find where to focus the sides of the lenses are on either side in inner and outer don't really have any strength you know you don't really have much strength there so for me if you are doing something like that where you're using multiple um, computer screens, I would definitely go with just a single vision lens. And and um, like I said, you could get that by your, it, it, they, they should be fairly cheap with your optometrist uh, or um, just get one over the counter or online. Thank you. And we have another. Should a baby be exposed to watching shows on a phone or television? How old is this baby? They didn't identify. Um, children under the age of two should have minimal um, screen time. And when I say minimal, I mean minimal. So shows and all of that. Mm -mm. The, we, we know for a fact that um, that the younger a child is exposed to uh, the screen and especially for long periods, then then the the higher the risk of them developing short sightedness and when i say short sightedness i don't mean minus two and minus four i mean minus i saw six year old with minus 13. 
minus 13 means that um, the six year old can only see just in front of them. And your your as you get older, your eyes grow. So the short sightedness will just get worse and that puts them at risk of so much eye disease. It's not funny. So I will not risk any child. I don't think that it, 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 any child should a uh, baby should be given excessive screen time at all. And like I said, under the age of so so there is a there is a uh, if you look online, I think there is a chart online as to how much time um, how much time per age. Um, uh, I think two years is is I can't I really can't remember the figures off offhand, but but it's specific amount of time together. So again, the intervals are important and and it's always important for that child to play outside. Outside play is key. So we, we were just informed that the baby is two months old. Of course, no, no, not at all. All right, thank you for that. So I have another for you. I am over 40 and have been told I just need readers. Is what you refer to as you say everyone over 40 need glasses? Yeah, those are th that's what I'm talking about, because you see. As we get older, our power to accommodate. Uh, gets weaker, so um, when I say accommodate, I mean that the, to, to look at something from distance to go from distance to near. So when you're looking at something in the distance, the muscles of accommodation relax and the lens becomes flat and thin. To look at something near, you have to focus, right? Just like a camera, remember the eyes like a camera. So to focus, those muscles contract and the lens gets fat, okay? Two things happen as we get older. The lens gets harder, so it's less able to change shape. It takes a longer time. You, you know, you know, you feel it when you look at something in the distance and when you try to look at something near, it takes a while for your eyes to focus. And, it, and, and you feel it, you feel it as, as time goes on. But the other thing is that the muscles are also getting fatigued. These muscles are the only muscles that work all the time. They're the only muscles that work all the time. So when you are, um, when you are going from, from distance to near and those muscles are always contracting, over time as we get older, the muscles become fatigued. And we see it too, if you try to do something early in the morning, and then by lunchtime, first first by four o'clock, yeah, you 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 find that your eyes are getting blurred. Then then a year passes and it's by two o'clock. Then a year passes and you find it's by lunchtime, and you're wondering, oh my god, what's going on with my eyesight? And that's what's happening. Um, but but if you try to force that, if you try to force that, that's where the that's where the eye strain comes in. And my last question I have. What is the best eye drop for itchy and dry eyes? Um, so there, there, there are a few. There is, uh, um, and I don't know what's, I know that Patidae is available in other parts of the Caribbean. So there's Patidae, there is Lastercaft, and there's Brixia. Now, um, uh, drops like, drops like Patidae and Brixia and Lastercaft, the reason the reason that many ophthalmologists like using them is because they do two things. One, they treat your acute allergy, but they also tr help prevent chronic allergy. And I'll explain. When you are exposed to an allergen, you you react right away. But if you react to it, if you if you are exposed to it tomorrow, your body remembers. Right. That's why some of us, when we have an allergic reaction to penicillin, can't take penicillin ever again. OK, so what what these drops do is they work on the chronic pathway so that even when you're exposed without using drops, you have less of a reaction. So what what we tend to do is we tend to start using those drops. Uh, uh, if you know when you start when when Sahara the Sahara uh, dust season starts, or if it's mango pollen or pollen or pui or whatever it is, because pui and pollen and grass pollen and all those things cause issues as well. So if you know when you tend to react, what time of the year, you start using the drops a couple of weeks before. 
so that by the time the season starts, you are less uh, prone to, to develop an, an um, allergic reaction. And on and and in in conjunction with that, you, you use um, you use lubricating eye drops because bearing in mind um, when your eyes are irritated, they tend to uh, even though they may water a lot, the the tears and the right consistency. They tend to be very mucousy and not spread over the front surface of the eye sufficiently. Thank you so much, Doctor. And at this time, I hand you back over to Miss Lean. So thank you so much, uh, Susanna. I was just checking to make sure I wasn't muted. Thank you so much, Susanna. And thank you, Doctor. But I want to ask a question, uh, especially to your last point. You mentioned uh, pate day, um, and especially because of the ingredient to help with the allergens. Um, so how do you use them together? If you're using pate day, how would you use the lubricating drops? Would, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, well, pate day, pate day is once a day. So I, I, I tend to use it on mornings, uh, and then you use the lubricating eye drops as often as you need. There's no stopping. Then there's no one of the things that I recommend is that if you tend to get up in the morning and you find that your eyes are stuck together, you, they feel very stiff or gritty in the morning. Make sure you put a drop in at night. Because at night we don't blink and we don't produce much tears. Because it's the blink, remember, it's the blink that spreads the tears. So, so last thing at night, and you can use it as often as necessary. So if you find that um blinking 20 times, uh you still the eyes still feel kind of heavy then you put a lubricating eye drop in and and then you can you can you know you use that to, to blink okay so as often as necessary with the lubricants and and the anti-allergy drops first thing in the morning excellent um so i'm glad you went back to my favorite slide the 2020 20. is it at all possible that you can take us through that slide to give us the tips again to help us to manage the digitalized strain. Right. So this, I, and I'm going to send, I'm going to send this to you, right? Excellent. So we make sure check your eyes regularly. The, I can't stress this enough. Um, you know, you know how you feel when you when you um, when you try to move a a, a, a cupboard or you try to push a car by yourself, or you try to drag something and, and, and you don't have enough strength or energy to do it. That is what's happening to your eyes if you are undercorrected or not corrected and you have short-sightedness or far-sightedness, or you are presbyopic, meaning that you need reading glasses. So it's really important to check your eyes regularly, okay? Otherwise, the eyes are going to be under strain. There are exercises, yes, that you can do. You uh, looking left, right, looking at something in the distance, and looking and looking at near to help uh, to improve your your muscles of accommodation and keep them working. So that they, what you are doing is you are breaking the cycle of accommodation, but you're also strengthening for those who have issues with looking at at near. So people who are far sighted, you tend you're tending to strengthen those muscles. But if you are in your forties, then that time has long gone. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, proper lighting, I can't stress this enough. Oh gosh, I have a 15 year old son who I have to say this to every single day. Uh, um, it, you will get serious eye strain. And also um, what we know for a fact um, is that kids who read in the dark, that was how they, we started uh, um, documenting short sightedness because before the advent of 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 uh, tablet de ta electronic devices, kids who used to read in the dark with a flashlight, those were the ones who went on to develop um, um, short sightedness. So proper lighting is really really important. I can't stress that enough. Cleaning your monitor. Every single one of you who is here, I would like you to pass your finger across your screen and tell me if it's smooth. And I'm being very serious. I would like you to tell me, uh, you can put it in chat, if you feel any grains, if it's smooth, look at your finger and tell me what you see. And you will see, even if you have just wiped that screen yesterday, especially with the dust outside, you will see for yourself that there is dust there. So it's really important to clean your, your monitor regularly. 
do not forget. And Susanna actually was the one who made me put my my computer up on the desk. I forgot because I don't use this table. So I put I put the computer up on a box, which actually limited the amount of strain on my neck. So it's important not only to make sure that your distance is adjusted at an arm's length away, but that your computer is uh, just under your gaze so that your neck is not under strain. OK, your neck must not be bent and it must not be bent backwards either, not not hyperextended. If you have a, a, a screen protector, use that to, to reduce your glare. Um, remembering that, uh, as somebody mentioned in a question, remembering that in the night, if you are working at night, drop your drop your um, go either go into night vision or reduce the um, the brightness of your screen. Sometimes the screen is way too bright. So just want to ch check that and make sure that that is um, that is that is changed. Increase the size of your font. Nobody cares if somebody else can see if somebody else who is on the side of you is looking at your um, at your phone and can read your messages, then they should not be they, they They're looking in the wrong direction. Tell them to look 20 feet away, not at your phone screen. Um, your phone screen, the size of your font is to suit your eyes. So increase the font size if necessary. My kids laugh at me all the time and I tell them they will eventually get there. So don't laugh. Make sure to blink frequently. Uh, I can't stress this enough. I actually had someone come in um, to see me recently. Everything was fine. She was taking her regular breaks. Yes, um, uh, but she wasn't blinking. Uh, um, she wasn't taking the taking the time to blink. She was taking her regular breaks and putting drops in her eyes. But in fact, what she did not realize is that she was blinking in in completely. So her her upper lid was coming down halfway over her bot halfway over her eye, and the uh, bottom half of her of her cornea was completely dry, completely dry. Yeah, um, and and so every time she she actually did blink fully. The eyes felt as if somebody threw sand into it. So she was, it, it was very, very uncomfortable. Wear your glasses. I cannot stress that enough. Wear your glasses. If your glasses aren't doing the trick, as the, your, the person who's, who's, um, who has the multiple screens, get something for the computer only, but wear your glasses and follow the 20, 20, 20 rule. Every 20 minutes, well, that's four 20s. Every 20 minutes, you take a 20 second break. You look 20 feet into the distance. Check and see if your neighbor have any mangoes on his tree. If he wear for, see if you have anything that you could bust a pelt on. Check and blink 20 times. But if you cannot take a, a break every 20 minutes, every two hours, you take a 10 minute break. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, first, I want to thank Susanna for being a fantastic moderator and Dr. Bartholomew, thank you again for being here today. You know, it was refreshing and we really need to take care of, our, of these very precious parts of our, our body. So we've come to the end of our MLI webinar. Thank you, audience, for being here and staying with us today. Please look out for our MLI programs emotional intelligence, understanding and building key performance indicators for your teams. It's time for a performance review. So this is really, really important in assisting you and leading change. And of course, our complimentary webinars. So see you next time and remember to level up.